You see an elite middle or long distance runner like Mo Farah running close to 50 seconds for 400 metres as part of a longer race, maybe as the final lap, and you think he could do some really fast times for the sprints. So it's an interesting question, how fast could Mo Farah run 100 metres? Well we actually have an answer to that because in 2012 there was a programme called BBC Superstars, I think it was, where sports celebrities got to compete against each other in athletics events that they wouldn't usually do. So there was 100 metres and Mo Farah came third in 12.98 for 100 metres. So that surprised a few people. I think most people thought he'd be quicker than that. The actual winner was Anthony Joshua in, oh I've got it here, 11.53, pretty fast. And then Robbie Grabars in 11.7. I think he's a former high jumper. So it turns out that although long distance runners are obviously pretty fast relative to most people, because of their slow twitch muscle fibres, it's very hard for them to convert it into much faster speed for a sprint. It, it's a different type of, of movement, a different type of training. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion, maybe Mo Farah could have gone faster, you know, maybe he wasn't going as hard as he could have done because of the risk of injury especially to the hamstring, I guess. I think I think it was a cold November, drizzly day, like not very good conditions. Um, I think some people said his block start would have needed work, but I'm, I'm not sure it was that bad. Um, it's worth bearing in mind that also in the race were the Brownlee brothers, the triathletes, and they got 14.33 um, and 14.7. So Mo was still quite a lot faster than them. But Anthony Joshua's time was really fast and it, it turns out that he'd beaten his school record for, what was it, ninth, ninth grade record, I think? Like about 11.6. So he was really fast when he was at school. He's, he's, he already had technique and training for sprinting, which makes a huge difference. But even so, in 2012, um, you know, he was, he was a heavyweight, super heavyweight. He was um, over 100 kilos, I think, which is a lot. Like, that's pretty heavy, even though he's, he's like six foot five or something. Um, so that's very impressive. And it just goes to show what the power and, te and technique, but especially the power, can achieve relative to... Um, just the general fitness of someone like Mo Farah. So it's it's fascinating and, and I was interested in this because I used to be a longer distance runner before changing to sprinting in my mid-30s. Obviously you can't really, I can't really compare myself to Mo Farah, I'm about um, four minutes slower than him for 5k. Um, but it was just interesting to see what an elite longer distance runner could do at sprinting and I guess it reinforced reinforces the point for me that it's quite a long transition to to get used to sprinting which is just a completely different type of motion um, requires a completely different type of training to longer distance like you won't just be good at one because you you're good at the other so um, I guess maybe not quite a few quite a few people probably didn't know about that um that race from 2012 there's a video of it on youtube i could i could link to it so you know if you didn't know about it i, I imagine that's probably probably quite quite interesting for some of you um so yeah it, it's it's interesting to know how fast mo farah could go if he really trained properly for the hundred um I mean, um, I'm finding it interesting for myself to try and see what the limits are. I mean, I suppose it depends what sort of athlete you naturally are. And actually, w when I was younger, like when I was at school, I wasn't sure if I was a sprinter or a longer distance runner 
naturally. I just kind of ended up doing longer distance because it was just easier in a way. Like I just fa I just enjoyed running for fitness, and it's just you don't have to think about it so much with longer distance. You just put your trainers on and you run for 20, 30 minutes from your house and you don't need to plan very much. You just run, whereas with sprinting, you kind of need to find a track and a club and spikes and you know think about how you're gonna do your, your program. Um, so, uh, you know, I've, I've left it a bit late personally to see what I can achieve with, with sprinting, but I'm finding it really interesting and um, I guess that's why I'm sharing it on YouTube and as I as I get better um, hopefully I can give more advice to people especially older athletes who 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 or older people who aren't athletes but who would like to try sprinting because I've I've really enjoyed it and would 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 recommend it